Wait for the snap. It's there, kicks up, and it's blocked. Blazers can pick it up. We've got a little bit of room if we can outrun everybody. Jeremy Grable has it. He's going to try to get to the end zone for a couple of points. Need one more block, and he gets it there. And the Blazers block it with some pick up two. That brings the Blazers faithful to their feet. Going to go three receivers, two on this press box side, one on the far side. Blazers going right to left on your radio. Going to try to run it again. O'Neal looking somewhere to go. Cuts inside, breaks the tackle. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. They're 40. He's down to the 30. He's going to get 20. He's going to take it the distance. Touchdown, run off the state. The David Dean Show. Your weekly look at Valdosta State University Blazer football is brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau. Hello and welcome to the David Dean Show. I'm Dick Rocky with the head coach. Valdosta State drives up to Macon, plays Fort Valley State up there and comes home with the 36 to 21 win in front of a good crowd there on a, a hot, miserable Saturday afternoon, coach. It was hot. Uh, you know, I, I was awfully proud of our players uh, that they made it through that game uh, with no cramps or anything like that. It just shows you what great work they put in in the, in the off season to get themselves ready. And uh, you know, we had some fans and a lot of the Fort Valley players that went out, but our kids hung in there and, and battled through the heat. And I don't think anybody caught a cramp on the bus ride home, which is good. Coach, I asked you this on the radio, and uh, I've never before, but. Uh, your first game was in 2000 as a head coach. This is your seventh season. And I ask you, what was the difference 2000, 2007? Is your stomach still churning before the, <laughs> after seven years? Well, it still does. You, know, you never know going into the new season what's going to happen, what kind of players you're going to have, and, and what's the makeup of your team. So until you tee it up and go through that first game, you don't know what's going to happen. And I know you ran into some people at the football game in Thomasville, and they asked you what you were doing there, and you had a great answer, I thought. <laughs> Well, if, if I sit at home, I'm going to be nervous thinking about all the things that I have not covered. And uh, so it was just easier for me to go relax and go watch a football game on Friday night. Well, you know, there's a lot of things to work on, but like I say, anytime you get that first win, however you get it, that's so important uh, for a football team. Well, no question. We We'd much rather start out 1-0 and than, than, than we did last year going 0-1. And, and beating a good football team like Fort Valley was always a plus. Well, it was a great win, and we'll be uh, looking forward to watching those highlights. We'll be back with uh, the highlights of the first half in just a moment. President Lewis, wide receiver, Fairday, Louisiana, and you're watching the David Dean Show. Go Blazers. Welcome back to the David Dean Show. Coach, your, your team really got off to a, a, an inauspicious start of that football game. We get the football to start with, three and out, them flying down the field, and all of a sudden we're down six to nothing. Well, we told our team that they were going to come out. Uh, they were going to come out hot. I knew that they had put a lot of emphasis in the offseason of trying to beat us, and, and we were going to have to weather the storm early. I just didn't realize it was going to be that big of a storm. But I tell you what, a great play by Jeremy Grable to, to come in and block the extra point and then return it for two points. That ended up being a huge momentum changer. It, it's unusual to have one, a momentum change that early, but they were, like I said, they were hot and that was a great play. He blocks it and runs it the distance, and we're going to see that in just a moment. Let's take a look at the first half. And the cheerleaders and the Blazers, and they're all black. Fort yeah, Valley, they, yeah, they gave us a call and said they wanted to wear white, so, uh, so we wanted to go black, and our guys decided they wanted to go black on black. And, I was a little, little worried about that, but I tell you again, I'm proud of our guys and the way they handled that heat. It was, uh, it was great for us. I, I know that they worked hard in the offseason. First play here, we were trying to set this up. We knew this was either going to be a big play or a loss, and it turned out to be a loss. And We come back and throw an incomplete on the, on the next two plays. They make a great play there to knock it down. And, they put together a three-play drive and put it in the end zone. Just a great play here. They throw the little check down route. We take a poor angle to go make the tackle and allow them to get inside the 10-yard line. And then good run here by the quarterback on the, the speed option. They go up, and then here's a great play by Jeremy. You see him fight through and pick up. Great job here by Dominic Wheeler leading down the field and getting in the way of those guys. Just proud of our guys, nobody pushing. Anybody in the back that was out of the play. So that was a big change for us to, uh, to put those two points on the board. And then we get a great return right here by Ridge Lewis. We get great blocking up front. He breaks one tackle right there. And then he's off to the, off to the sideline over there. The guy had the angle on him and made the great play. And again, we put this drive together. It's a good throw right here. Again to Reggie. And, he gets into the end zone. We kick the extra point to go back up by three. 
And uh, you know, they had some issues with their with their snaps a few times and put their quarterback in a tough situation. But I tell you, I, I give their, their quarterback a, a lot of credit. I thought he played an excellent football game. He was hard to bring down and he made some very good decisions for those guys. Uh, there's a good run there by Cedric. We just got to get him going a little bit more downhill uh, to finish off the, the, the runs. Good throw there to Shontavious. We ended up having to punt. Don't get a very good punt and give them good field position once again. And uh, they get down in here. Great play again right there by Tevin Davis slicing in. And great play here by Dominic Wheeler slapping that ball out. Uh, that wide receiver was a South Carolina transfer, a very good football player. Dominic played very well except for one snap in the game. Good throw right here to Tyree Waiters. Tyree was playing his first game for us at Valdosta State. And then here's a great run. This is a lot of what we saw last year out of Cedric. He's just got deceptive speed. You don't realize how fast he's going because he runs so smooth. But a big run. We botched the extra point right there so we don't pick up seven on that, only get six, and we got to correct that. But here's a good look at the quarterback, how we had him in the backfield several times and just couldn't bring him down. And then we got to tip that, tuck that ball away. You know, we can't let those balls slapped out of there. Great play here by the corner. He uh, comes underneath and, and uh, makes a great play, tips it up, and, and stays locked up on it. And there's one right there where we got a chance to recover a fumble and we try to pick it up instead of getting on it, especially in that area of the field. But a great goal line stand here by our defense. Uh, they bowed their neck for four straight plays inside the five yard line. And here's the last one, with Jeremy Grable and Darrell White making a great play. And then unfortunately, we, we don't do a very good job of blocking up front. They slip a guy through and we end up giving them two points on the, on the safety. Good coverage on our kick. As you can see we had him down there at the 30 yard line. Great, great rush right there. Again, Darrell White making another good play. They punt the ball back to us. Good throw there to, to Willie Downs. Willie playing his first game for us, I thought played very well. Here's a big third down play. Great run there by Austin Scott. We got great blocking up front, great blocking downfield to, to put us inside the 10. And then great fake there by Austin. He carries that thing out and Caden pulls it out and runs it into the end zone. We get the extra point there. We're back up by 14. And then, uh, you know, again, we've got him in the backfield so many times and he just keeps slipping, slipping tackles just like right there. And, uh, you know, that's the difference in two or three yards. They end up getting a great punt, putting us down inside the one yard line. Here's the first play off the goal line throw to, to Shontavious. It's a big play. and then come back and hit him on the comeback route. We're moving the ball down the field. And then big play there by Willie. Well, just a strong, strong physical football wide receiver. And, and he makes a good stiff arm and takes it into the end zone. And then here's a great play there by Justin Williams, stopping them there on their screen and, and forcing the, the time to run out there at the half, and we go in with a pretty comfortable lead there at the half. Absolutely, yeah, a good 29-8, to eight. and uh, Coach, as you go into the locker room, you know, what are you talking to your team about this week? Well, it's the same old thing, you know, let's let's play another 30 minutes. we got to play the 30 minutes like we did the, the first 30 minutes, and uh, we want to come out and make a statement early, and we did, but unfortunately we didn't play the other other parts of the uh, the half as well as we played the first part. Scanned the paper this morning. I noticed one of your players, one of your defenders, said it was sort of like last year. We missed too many tackles. We had the guys bouncing off of us, and, and that's good to hear that your players <laughs> recognize that. Exactly. You know, they they talk about that. They take a lot of pride in, in the way that they play, and and when they see something like that happen, it's good to, to know that they're going to improve on those. All things. right, coach. We'll be back with second half highlights in just a moment. The David Dean Show is brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and also by Colony Bank, the Houston Clinic, Sunset Farm Foods, Drury Inn and Suites, the Georgia Lottery, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Coach, you come out of the first half, nice lead going into the second half, but uh, we want to comment, we had a tremendous, I, I'm going to say maybe the best road crowd I've ever seen for Valdosta State. Well, I tell you, it's really surprising. I think we, our fans outnumbered the Fort Valley fans, and we did, we had a great turnout. It was great when the buses pulled up to see all the people out there in the tents and waving us in. It, it was exciting to, to see that type of crowd in the first game. 
Well, let's go ahead and get into the second half. And, you know, a lot of people left because we had the big lead, and I understand that. But, you know, it got a little nervous there for late, later <laughs> in that game maybe. Yeah, it did. We, uh, we made it a little bit closer than it, that it should have been. Uh, you know, we've got to finish things off a little bit better. But there you see right there. It's a it's great look at the crowd. And, uh, you know, in that type of heat for those folks to be there and to, to be cheering us on, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a great atmosphere there. But here you, you come out in the second half and, and they're going to get the football and, and we got to make a great stop. And good play right there by Davis Durham on the kickoff coverage. And uh, you know, we, we're fortunate here they get a drop. I think we're in a great position to make a play. And uh, we force them three and out. We get good field position, we come right back, and here's a nice throw there to, uh, to Reggie Lewis, get some positive yards, and then we come right back and throw a deep ball to Willie. Willie makes a great adjustment on the ball, great throw there by Caden. We get in the end zone and quickly we score. Uh, you see in less than two minutes where we put a points up on the board and then I think from that point, we, uh, we felt pretty comfortable with where we were, and, and I don't think offensively we played as well as we should. There's one I think got, kind of got away from us. I, I thought that may have been a fumble. They see it another way. Good throw here. Reggie loses his balance there. and Then, you know, this is what we've got to improve on. We just, you know, kicking out of our end zone there, we give them the ball at the 31-yard line. That's a short field, and, and we've got to do a better job than that. We've got to have – Dom's a better punter than that, and he's, he's, got to, he's got to come around for us. But, again, we make a good goal line stand here. You know, we're, we're fighting, and then on fourth down right here, they just out leverage us on the option play and get to the goal line. Great play right here. We stop them. Uh, Ashton Ballard makes a good one-on-one -on -one stop with the quarterback and prevents them from getting the two-point conversion. A good run here by, by Cedric again. It's about 10 or 11 yards. And then here's a, just a poor read there by Caden. He knew it as soon as he came to the sideline. He, he kind of predetermined where he wanted to go with that football. And they made a great break on it. He throws the ball to flat. It's a little bit different story. So we turn the ball over again, give him another short field. And uh, fortunate here, they throw the ball out of the back of the end zone. We had good coverage here by Dominique. And then a great play right here. That's one of those where you want to stay home all the time, and that's exactly what Trocon did. Here's Justin Williams making a good play, not allowing him to, to get away. Again, they're down here in the red zone. We've got to bow up and, and keep them from getting in the end zone, and that's exactly what we do. We're the benefit right here. This is the third down play where they uh, have a bad snap, and they lose a lot of yards. They come back on the, on the next down. And, throw a uh, incomplete pass and we get the ball back and um, in this events over the next quarter or so we have two touchdowns that are called back for penalties and uh, those are just things that, that we've got to do a better job of we can't leave points out on the field uh, from mistakes great play there by again by Reggie Lewis on a great run after the catch and, you know right here we get down in the red zone we got a first down right there, and then the ball squirts out late. They recover it, and uh, you know we we're fixing to go up a, a, another score. So we just again offensively we're leaving way too many things out there on the field. And they put together a good drive, go down and score, and uh, you know we cut it now down to 15. We're still doing what we know how to do best. You know we're we're doing our run read uh, throws and catches and. Good check down there to Austin Scott. Unfortunately, we don't make the first down. We had a penalty after a, a touchdown catch. And then we're fortunate here, Lance Holder makes a great interception, gets us the ball back. And this one's the one that kind of iced the game. It was a great run. We just get the holding call right out there on the edge. And, you know, we're fixing to be down inside the 10 yard line and we get the holding call. And now all of a sudden we're back there to the 45 yard line again. So. You know, frustrating afternoon uh, in the second half because we didn't play the way that we should have played, didn't finish the game like we should. But a lot of things to grow on. I'm excited about the win, and we'll move on. Coach mentioned just a couple of names. Lawrence Virgil had 
three tackles for losses and two and a half sacks. He, he's a man out there. Now. Yeah, he is. When when Virgil plays, there's not very many people in the country that can block him, and we're we're awfully proud to have him. Local guy from Brooks County. And I just a couple real quick. Lance Holder had a good game. I, uh, you know, Justin Williams, the local kid from Valdosta High School, good game. Yeah, he did. You know, they. I thought our linebackers played very well. Chris Pope and Jeremy Grable both had a lot of good plays. Charmaine Washington from yep, Colquitt yep. County made some big hits. On uh, you know you probably didn't see some of those, but he made some big hits on their running back. He did. We'll be back in just a moment with the Dury Inn and the Sweet Scoreboard. My name is Manny Evans. I play cornerback. My hometown is Darien, Georgia. You're watching the David Dean Show. Go Blazers! Welcome back to the Dury Inn and the Sweet Score, uh, Scoreboard, Coach. A lot of scores, and we mentioned caught this right away. Every score I have, give, I'm going to give you to look at. We played this year, and every one of them won. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. that's a little scary. We've got a very tough schedule this year. Uh, North Alabama, forty-two to seven over Miles, who had a great year last year. We well, had a chance to watch a little bit of that. They looked very good, very athletic. Uh, UNC Pembroke, who we play this year, twenty-five to twenty-one over Winston Salem. Yeah, that's a big upset. You know, Winston Salem was number five in the country, and uh, Pembroke beat them at home. Uh, West Georgia gets a thirty-one to twenty-one win. Yeah, it's, Mars Hill. I, you know, Mars Hill's been a, a team that's been uh, kind of in the playoff hunt every year. So West Georgia, that was a big win for them. Delta State over Mississippi Valley State. It's an FCS school, twenty-one or twenty-four to fourteen. Yeah, that was Delta State's first game, Mississippi Valley's second game. So you know, that's a little bit scary for them to beat a uh, FCS school that's in there their second week. And then, uh, well, we did mention. I think I had shorter, shorter lost twenty-three to fifteen to Charleston Southern, which is an FCS school. Yeah, you know, they, they played them very well. Uh, Charleston Southern was one and zero going into that ball game, and uh, you know, it looks like shorter played them extremely well. And Texas A&M Kingsville, who uh, we go play them this year in Texas. Yeah, that's our last game of the year. They beat Central Washington, who's usually one of the top teams out in the West. And, uh, you know, that's a big, big win for Kingsville. Anytime you can get off to a 1-0 start, you, you, you got a chance. And a big game down in South Florida, really, where I grew up a little bit below that, Melbourne, Florida Tech, their very first football game. They're in the Gulf South Conference. Defeat Stetson 20 to 13, and Stetson is a Division One. They're an FCS program, but I think this may be their first or second year. This is their first year playing football. Both of those teams, that was their first game in an extremely long time, and uh, it's good to see Florida Tech. You love those Gulf South conferences to go up and beat the FCS schools. We had two of them do that, and that's that's exciting. And we were talking about Florida Tech. They're the only Division Two football program in the state of Florida. They're going to be good quick, I think. There's so much talent in Florida that they're going to get some good players. Well, there is. There's a lot of untapped talent. You know because if they can't go to Division One, they either have to go to a junior college in California, and now Florida Tech's going to keep all those guys home. They're going to be very good, and they're going to be good in a hurry. And they're going to be coming to Valdosta. Uh, in fact, our next – that won't be our next home game, I think. I think it's – That's about three weeks uh, down yeah, the road. Weeks, yeah. yeah, it's our homecoming game, as a matter of fact. That's right, in October. So, a lot of scores, a lot of interesting scores early in the season. We'll be back with the Georgia Farm Bureau look ahead in just a moment. The David Dean Show is brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and also by Mediacom, First State Bank and Trust, Blanton and Griffin, Anheuser-Busch, Holiday Inn, Prince Automotive, and U.S. Education TV. Welcome back to the Georgia Farm Bureau Look Ahead. And Coach, you have an off week, and, and that's probably good after a first game because I know there's probably a lot of work to do. <laughs> well, there is a lot of work to do. I, I kind of wish we had that off week kind of in the middle of the season, play about four or five games when you start to get beat up. So now we've got to make a, a nine-week stretch where we're going to play nine straight weeks. But, uh, you know, somewhere along the way you're going to have to do that if you're going to have to make a playoff run. Last year we, we had to go on about a 10 or 11 straight week uh, uh, run so you know it's it's good for us to to have this week off uh, there's a lot of things that we got to improve on and, and we're going to go back to work this week and try to improve on those things and hopefully from game one to game two uh, we're going to get better do you go into pads at all i mean full uniform in hitting or anything or is it more just details well it's a lot of details but we will be in full pads for a couple of days a lot of it will depend on how we came out of this game you know if we're beat up we got some sore shoulders or knees or anything like that that will kind of determine how much hitting we do uh, but we've got to go back and we've got to tackle you know obviously we got to work on our tackling we got to work on our blocking so you have to do that in full pads so they, it will be a little bit of a physical week but not not everyday physical 
Do you give them, is it going to be like regular weeks? You'll get some time off also? Do you give them a little bit of time off this week? We will. We're going to go Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with practice, and then we'll give them Friday off and give them an opportunity to go home and watch their high school play. And then we'll give them Saturday off, and we'll come back on Sunday and, and start to prepare for uh, for Shorter University. Coach, you got a little time. I've never brought this up before, but your scout team. You, I've, I, I'm at practice on Thursdays, your last, and I'm always hearing you complimenting the scout teams most of the time <laughs> about what they do, and that's a sort of a, a thankless job. Well, it is. Uh, you know, those guys don't have an opportunity to play in the games. A lot of them are the red shirt guys, or a lot of them are the walk ons that that really don't play until they're juniors or seniors. And, you know, they come out to practice every day. And I tell them all the time, they're just as important as the start and left tackle or the start and safety because their job determines how we do on Saturday. They have to give us the looks. They have to give us the effort. And a lot of times it's not easy to give that great effort knowing that you're not going to be out there on the field on Saturday. Well, I know it's going to be a busy week even though there's not a game. And uh, I don't think people realize. I, I, I see it, how, much, how many hours your coaches – I mean, they're there probably 24-7 almost, it seems like. I mean, they're early and late. And well, they are. They, I, you know, I've been getting to the office, and, and some of those guys beat me in there, but to get in there about 7.30, and then I'm rolling home a little bit after midnight sometimes. So we do put in a lot of hours, but, uh, you know, the reason we do it is for these players and, and give us an opportunity to win. Uh, you know, the, the one thing that I will say that we do is we, when we're there, we're putting in the time to work. We're not sitting around uh, joking around. Well, it was a great win for Valdosta State on the road there at Fort Valley on a, a tough, hot day for everybody that came to the football game. I don't think anybody got sick or had to call the police or the uh, EMTs or anything in. But just anytime, the chain guy. Yeah, just just a chain. He he struggled the whole game. I kept coming. He forget he kept forgetting what down it was. It, it was fourth down and went back to second down several times. But um, it was fun. Anytime you go on the road and win, it's fun. So yep. congratulations to that. Uh, going one and zero is better than that zero and one last year. That's so. exactly right. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. I do want to remind you folks that we will be, uh, even though we're having off week, we'll be back next week uh, with a show. And we're going to have Valdosta State uh, soccer coach. Our new volleyball coach will be here. And we'll possibly sh show up with a few other coaches for that segment next week. So please turn in next week and uh, maybe learn a little bit about some of the other programs going on during the fall. So for the head coach, David Dean, I'm Dick Rocky. Have a wonderful week.